Hello everyone, we're updating this video for 2024. In this tutorial, we'll walk you through the simple steps to create your own SharePoint site from scratch. By the end of this video, you'll be equipped with the tools and knowledge needed to build a functional and efficient site for your team or company in 2024. To just get to the creation part, head here in the video. There are many advantages to using a SharePoint site in your organization. SharePoint sites provide a centralized platform where team members can easily collaborate on projects and documents in real time. We can also customize and scale these sites to meet any specific business needs. Businesses can tailor their unique layouts, features, and workflows to enhance processes and operations. As the business evolves, SharePoint sites can scale accordingly, and you can always add or modify features and integrations without a total overhaul. Okay, let's get started. To create a SharePoint site, you're going to need the necessary permissions from your organization. When you're logged into Microsoft 365, you can access SharePoint by going to the App Launcher and selecting SharePoint. From the SharePoint app, the tiles that you see here are SharePoint sites that you've accessed. Each tile is a separate SharePoint site that you're a part of or have been to. To create a new site, just select the Create Site option in the top left. If you don't see that option available, you're going to need to reach out to your admin of your company. There might be policies in place that don't allow you to create a new SharePoint site. Clicking Create Site is going to open up a window, and now we have to make a decision. There are two different site types that we can create. There are team sites and communication sites. The most common type that you'll see day to day is the team site. When a Microsoft team is created, it automatically creates one of these, by the way. So what's the difference between the two? A team site's primary purpose is for users to create and collaborate on content. Documents, lists, planner tabs, apps, planning events, producing deliverables. They can be used for projects, departments, programs, anything. But the primary purpose is for people to come together to work on content alongside other people. Their navigation is also along the left-hand side. A communication site's primary purpose is typically for showcasing content or to act as a landing page or main page. They're used by companies to act as a place to distribute information, provide links to department intranet sites or resources like forms. They can even be used to distribute out company-wide news. Their navigation is along the top and their look and feel is more tailored for consuming content and accessing resources from the company. In our other videos, we're gonna walk you through how to create a linked intranet with nice drop-down menus, buttons, and more for your organization. If you're interested, watch that after this video. These two site types also create different resources in the background. A team site creates something called a 365 group. A 365 group is a wrapper around a bunch of different resources. So we have the SharePoint site, but it's just part of a larger thing called a 365 group. A 365 group has a SharePoint site, a group mailbox, group calendar, shared OneNote notebook, and some more things. If you wanted to connect your SharePoint site to a Microsoft team afterwards, you want to make sure that it's a team site, as you'll be connecting your 365 group, which includes the SharePoint site. The files and teams have to live somewhere, right? A communication site does not create a 365 group. The only thing that's created is the communication site and we can grant permissions to specific people, security groups, the whole organization, however we want to do it. You will not be able to turn a communication site into a Microsoft team afterwards or into a 365 group. Generally, communication sites are for landing pages for a company or a large group in a business. A team site is used for the day-to-day -day work. I'll select the team site option and I'll see a list of available templates that Microsoft provides or your organization does. You can use these predefined options to get up and running quickly and always modify the look and feel afterwards to whatever you like. I'll just go with the standard team site option for now, then I'll just confirm that choice. Now I need to give the site a name. Shorter names are generally better, but that's a topic for another video. When we put in the site name, because it's also creating a 365 group in the background, we see a bunch of other options that we can customize. The site name will appear at the top of the site. The site description is just a helpful reminder for the users and IT as a whole. Because there's a group mailbox that's also being created, we can customize it here, as well as the SharePoint site's web address. Now it is possible to change these things afterwards, but it's not the easiest thing to do. 
we can have a different site name, group email address, and site address tied together. It's just easiest to customize those things here. SharePoint is also going to check to see if your company already has a site or group email that's the same. If that's the case, you'll just have to use a different email address and web address. Once you've made your choices, choose Next. Now we can choose the privacy settings and the language of the site. If you make your site private, only people that are added will be able to access its content. If you switch it to public, anyone in the organization is able to find it and access its content. Yes, you are able to change a site's privacy settings afterwards. If you choose the communication site option, you will not have the option to customize this permission type. Everyone will have to be added manually or by using security groups, such as the all user security group. Once you're done, choose create site and it will start to create the site for you. Now we can add users to the site or those who will be able to access it. In general, there are three levels of users within a SharePoint site, but we'll be making a video on how to customize permissions in SharePoint and how they work. By default, there are owners, members, and visitors. Owners control the site in its permissions and can work within it. Members work on the content within a site and can't customize permissions. Visitors only have read access. You can add members here by entering their names and selecting enter. You can also make someone else an owner. As the creator of the SharePoint site, you're going to be an owner automatically. And it's always a good idea to have more than a single owner on a SharePoint site. Add as many users as you wish. You can always add more later. Customize their permission level and then choose finish. You'll be redirected to your newly created SharePoint site. And here it is. Congratulations, you've successfully created an intranet site for your organization. The navigation will be available either along the top or the left, depending on the type of site that you chose. You're always able to customize the look and feel, the settings, and anything you want, as long as you're a site owner. In other videos, we explore customizing permissions, customizing intranets, setting up and planning your intranet, automation workflows, and more. If you've made it this far, remember to like and subscribe and check out our other videos. If you'd like to know how to do something, drop us a comment down below.